Hey guys, welcome into the channel. I'm very excited about this next episode as it's a topic we haven't gotten into as much thus far, but is so extremely vital and important for anyone wanting to have holistic empowerment. And that is the topic of health and healing. I'm joined by Theo Lucier, who is an expert on the most practical do-it-yourself protocols and truly understanding how to reverse all the negative effects from an extremely toxic world that we live in here in the modern era. So I hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned. That's coming up next. And welcome back everyone to yet another episode of the Wizard Factory podcast where together we explore the universe through ourselves. My name is Logan Hart and this channel is all about giving you the spiritual tools and mindsets to help live a more empowered and free life. If that sounds good to you, please drop a like below, help the video get seen by more people. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications every time we post a new video. Today's episode, I'm extremely excited to be joined by Theo Lucier, who is the founder of ForgottenHealth.com, a supplement formulator and a holistic health researcher, who has actually been a very key figure in my own health and healing journey, especially over the, the last year. So thank you, Theo, for joining us, and welcome to the show, man. Love that. Yeah, thanks for the uh, the really nice intro, man. I appreciate that, and I'm excited to be on and cover some stuff that can help a lot of people. I mean, I, as we talked about right before we jumped on, you know, I just love these old, you know, kind of long since forgotten, but still super effective do-it-yourself kind of health hacks that you know, pretty much anyone can do at home for not a lot of money. Sometimes they're even free. Um, and uh, I just get a real kick out of that. So excited to dive in. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. And so I'd love to get started with today. Um, what, what we're going to be getting into here is first kind of briefly touching on your background, your backstory, how you got into health as well as your sort of top-down view uh, perspective on the human body, what is the cause of disease and how to reverse that. And then the last half of the show, we're going to be looking at actual, some very accessible and effective ways that you can detox the body, heal, and take your health and healing back into your own hands. Because as you're probably aware the current system is very exploitative. It is not about healing. It's about treatment. It's about how can we extract the max lifetime value from the customer, the patients. And there is no money in cures, only treatments, right? So just keeping up the facade, keeping the charade going while people remain sick and dying, um, essentially. So the only true answer is to take that power back to become your own healer, your own doctor and move forward on that journey yourself. Yeah, that's the the medical industrial complex long, long ago went to uh, what I call a toll booth model of revenue. So, you know, every time you pass through the toll booth, you got to pay the toll um, and, you know, chronic disease management um, is their entire business model and it's worth trillions of dollars, um, you know, but even as recently as, as um, you know, 120 years ago, um, doctors actually did make an effort to cure. Um, it was only around 1910 when um, the Flexner report came out that uh, they centralized control of the uh, medical system and um, changed the whole education system around so they had complete control of it. Um, at you know local, state, and national levels, and they switched over to a a drugs, chemistry based drugs and surgery model. Um, prior to that, 
in the US, you could actually go to homeopathic hospitals. You could go to electro medicine hospitals. If you want to be a doctor, you could get a medical degree from an electro medicine educational institution. Uh, you could get a medical degree as a homeopathic doctor. A lot of people don't know that. Um, but that was as recently as World War I. Um, they were still doing those degrees. Um, and then control is completely consolidated. Um, they rolled it into the state universities. So the state would have control, which also means the federal government would. And the drug companies took over the education. And here we are. And, you know, I'm going to summarize the the part about how I got into to health because I don't want to sit here and you know talk about myself the whole time I want to make sure I deliver as much value as I can to the people listening and watching um, but in in short um, I started a business um, in an extremely stressful high-risk industry um, and I did that business for 15 years um, and I kept burnout cycles in it. I would go come here, I'd burn out, I'd crash, I'd kind of go through recovery, I'd come up again and I'd burn out and crash. It was circular. And I was able to keep kicking the can down the road, so to speak, on these feelings of burnout, which was, you know, low energy, apathy, uh, forms of depression, which by the way, most depression is biological. It is not a failure of you and how you think. Um, and uh, it, I, I just kept, and each burnout would get harder and harder to come back from. And um, I kept using more and more stimulants. So, you know, I was way overdosing on caffeine and stuff like yerba mate and, you know, commonly available over the counter stimulants. And, and then I had to wind down at night and deal with the stress because I was working so many hours, you know, I'd still, you know, I'd work from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. most days, um, easily. Uh, I'd start winding down with drinks, you know, and <laughs> to bring the stress down, still be able to work. And then that started off as just a fun thing once or twice a week. And, and then it just became an everyday thing. And so then my body got trapped in this cycle of using stimulants to get going in the morning, depressants to come down at night, it became a vicious cycle. And um, then my, my body chemistry changed from that, you know, alcohol gets converted to sugar instantly. And then, then your gut dysbiosis with candida and the like gets worse. Um, and then they start demanding more sugar because that's what they like. So I found myself eating like entire huge boxes of cookies in the evening, you know, to, to feed the, the candida because that's what they wanted. But I didn't even really understand what was going on. I was just going... And eventually my endocrine system just completely crashed. And I remember um, coming to work one day, I mean, I own the business, so I kind of do whatever I wanted, but um, I was still beholden to the, the clients, right? So I didn't have a boss, but it was like, I had mini bosses, the, the clients, it was a service business. And I remember looking at an email and staring at it and just getting really tired and then typing out the email, which took the better part of an hour. And then I laid down on the floor in my office, just exhausted, stared at the ceiling. And I was like, this is not right. And I kept waking up with fatigue. And I'll tell you what, the feeling of, you know, being in your thirties and waking up tired is the worst feeling ever. It's the worst feeling for anyone, but you know, I thought I had like some dread disease or something because it's just not right to wake up tired. You should wake up with energy. And um, I knew something was wrong. I wasn't quite sure how to fix it, um, strangely enough, because uh, I just figured I'd try it. What the heck? Had really good insurance at the time. I, I did want to see what the traditional medical model would give me, even though I didn't, even back then, I didn't really trust it. And um, the first consultation I had, you know, they don't, they don't know what to do with chronic fatigue. They don't even know what it is. Um, the, uh, the neurologist uh, looked at me for a, a minute, maybe, um, and then tried to give me a prescription for uh, methamphetamine, um, commonly known as Ritalin, which is actually methamphetamine. Um, and I just laughed. I, I just looked at her and laughed. And I said, this is not helpful. This does not do anything. We need to cure this, not cover it up. 
And she just looked at me, had nothing to say, you know, because her entire education is is based on drugs and what drugs to prescribe. That's it. They don't do they're just glorified search engines for drug companies in human flesh. That's it. And pretty soon they'll be outsourced for AI um, that will just do the, the drug prescriptions that way. Um, but uh, so after that, I was like, you know what? I'm going all in on quote unquote alternative health. I don't really like using that term because it's not alternative. It's actually what real health is. Um, so I went all in and I just started reading every book I could find. And I went through some of the new ones like back then, you know, Dave Asprey's Headstrong was 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 new. And um, that's a good one because it introduces people to the mitochondrial model of health, um, which is a really good one. Um, I started reading the old stuff like, um, you know, Gilbert Ling's work on energy generation um, in the body. Uh, fascinating stuff there. Um, Albert St. Georgie um, won a Nobel Prize for discovering vitamin C. He's very big on the electrical model of health, which we'll talk about. Um, Otto Warburg, his, his work on cancer. Um, fascinating stuff. Uh, if I remember the dates correctly, I believe that's from the 1920s. The Germans, by the way, they figured out stuff in health, you know, over a century ago that is some of it's just now being explored here at, at a scientific level. They were far ahead and still are in many ways. A um, lot, of, lot of good stuff comes out of Russia because um, they didn't have the budget for the drug development programs that the U.S. had. Um, and so they kind of went away from a chemistry model during the Soviet times and they use a physics based model because it's cheaper. So if you're paying for everyone's health care, you're going to want to use what's cheaper. It's easier to use a couple cents worth of electricity than it is to do these massive drug discovery programs that cost billions. Um, so a lot of good stuff comes out of there. And then um, eventually I just soaked up enough and done enough self experimentation over years where I was like, I got it. You know, I mean, I reversed aged a little bit. People kept telling me I look younger and younger and what was going on. And I just kept waking up with energy and I felt great. And um, my mood improved, the, the depression was gone, the chronic fatigue was gone, I felt great. I had energy to do stuff and I was just stoked on life, you know? I was just like, man, this is crazy. I, why didn't anybody tell me this before? And I felt so strongly about it that I um, I quit the whole business. I literally just walked away from it, um, literally just walked away from it. I didn't sell it, just walked away, whatever. I just, just didn't care anymore and went all in on the, uh, the health stuff. And I became a supplement formulator based on what I discovered when I was doing this kind of research, which deals with the foundational energy cycle in the body. Yeah, thank you for that. And that's extremely interesting. So when you say foundational ener energy cycle of the body, what do you mean by that? Well, I'm sure like a lot of people listening, um, I got kind of frustrated when I first got into natural health. Um, I didn't understand what route to go down because there's so many things that are healthy and they all seem to work. Like there's different diets that seem to work there you can do yoga and get a lot of health from that you can um, take various supplements and you know that you can derive health from that you can walk a lot and get health from that like what you can discharge negative emotions or beliefs that don't serve you and you can get health from that so what what the heck ties them together like physics is always looking for this unified theory of physics um, classical physics, I should say, mainstream. Um, what is the unified theory of health? Well, that's been figured out a long time ago, well over a hundred years ago. And in essence, it's this, at the most fundamental level in our bodies, at the smallest level, we run on tiny whispers of DC electrical current. Everything else sits on top of that cycle. So there's no, you know, this is one of the things with diet people is they get so dogmatic. Um, the people that promote, you know, everything in health is just your diet. It's, it's not, 
um, cause there is no carbohydrate transport chain in your cells. There is no fat carb, uh, transport chain in your cells. There is no protein transport chain in your cells. What there is, is an electron transport chain and the ATP energy cycle sits on top of that. So if you want more energy, you want more chemical energy, you've got to have more electrical energy. And so your job is to look for these little pieces of electricity called electrons and add more of them to your body. Um, and so in general, things that you ingest that tend to be healthy for you, they are electron donors. They give you uh, little pieces of electricity. And in general, things that are toxins are electron stealers. They steal your little pieces of electricity. So those would be toxins or emotions that don't serve you or EMF. Non-native EMF will do that as well. And so once you know that, you can just focus on adding electrons and limiting electron stealers. Um, a good model to understand this is, um, you know, especially in the 80s, this was very popular it, it, at a huge level, which is why you still hear about it now is this whole alkaline water thing um, and alkalizing effects of vegetables and this and that. Right. Okay. Well, that's actually true. Um, but alkalinity is known as pH and pH is just a way of measuring voltage in a solution. That's it. It just measures how many electrons it has. And voltage is just electromotive potential. Um, so when people are talking about alkaline water, alkalizing effects of raw foods and things like that, what they're really saying is they're electron donors. And that's where the health benefit comes from the whole time. Um, vitamin C, another really good example. Vitamin C is a huge electron donor. It donates electrons. That is why vitamin C is actually an antitoxin. So if you have toxins in your bloodstream, you're exposed to a lot of car exhaust that day for some reason, um, you can ingest, you know, 8,000 milligrams of vitamin C and it'll go through your bloodstream. It'll neutralize those toxins like that. And, um, you're good. It, it, it literally takes that positive um, charge of the negative, and it's a weird how they decide to name them, but like bad things for you tend to have a positive charge. Good things will have a negative charge. And so the vitamin C is electron donor. It goes in there and it neutralizes the toxin. And that's, that's the whole gist of it right there. So low energy, poor health is caused by only two things. So nutrient deficiencies and toxins. So, you know, poisonous toxins and, and underneath that is, are you catching electrons or are you losing them? That's it. That's the whole deal. Well, that's fascinating how you can take something as extremely complex as the human body and the ideas of health that we have and condense it down to a, a simplified perspective. And of course, that's not to say there, that that's the only two things that you have to consider. There's a myriad of other aspects to it. But when you're talking about general, uh, especially in this time that we're living in with so many toxins from every angle, the food, the air, chemicals we're putting on our bodies, all, all this kind of stuff, um, this is what you want to really focus on. Because this is the area that's kind of like the most under attack, if you will, even. And I do personally see it as, a, as an attack. I believe it's chemical warfare. It is. Yeah. I mean, a really good example. So I, I mentioned walking and yoga earlier. How are those connected to vitamin C? Well, um, this wasn't known. I think it was around 12 years ago now. This was discovered. So it's pretty recent. When fascial tissue in your body, so it's like a wrapper or a special type of tissue that penetrates all throughout your body from head to toe. Um, when it's mechanically uh, manipulated, stretched, compressed, whatever, um, it is piezoelectric. So piezoelectric means that um, if you apply mechanical force to something, it induces electron flow, generates electricity, mm. basically. Um, so your fascia is piezoelectric. So when you walk around, uh, when you do yoga, when you work out, you actually are generating electron flow during that process. Um, so you're generating electrons deep within the body and then your fascia will route them to wherever they're needed. So, um, you know, if you're just, if you're walking and you're not really using like an area in your upper neck 
you know, very much, but that area is injured, your fascia will route excess electrons to that area to help heal it. Um, mm -hmm. Yoga does a lot of fascial stretching and compression, which is one of the main benefits of it. Um, you know, this, it was only, I think in the last 20 or 30 years that the real translation of, of um, the Chinese word qi was, was done in English. Um, and it literally means electrical flow. Um, it's, it's, it was their ancient word for electricity. Um, Chinese meridian points are areas of the body that are more electrically conductive than other areas. When they put that hair thin needle in there, um, one of the things that it does is um, route static charge from the atmosphere into the body. That needle is a conductor and it goes into an electrically conductive area in the body, a nerve bundle. Like a little lightning um, rod. Yeah, exactly. And then, uh, you know, they, when they say, oh, we're going to undo energy blockages in your meridians, that, that is, that's actually literal. That is what that's from. Uh, in, in Chinese medicine, they have, um, there's an acupuncture point, uh, it's called bubbling spring. It's on the bottoms of your feet. Um, the reason they call that bubbling spring is because when you go outside and bare feet and you ground yourself electrically to the ground, the earth itself is a very huge electron donor. You can think of it, it has a very strong negative charge. Um, and when you stand on it barefoot, it's bubbling up these, this free energy that your body then takes and uses. Um, and that's why that, that point is called bubbling spring. So, um, I mean, electro medicine goes all the way back. I mean, Chinese medicine is obviously over 5,000 years old there, but, um, you know, the ancient Greeks used a, a type of fish in that area called torpedo fish, which is electrical. Um, so they literally do foot baths with these fish and it would shock people. They use it for migraine treatment, uh, treatments and, and, um, longevity treatments. I'm, I'm shocked to just hearing that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, they were doing this stuff uh, a long time ago. Um, I mean, in, in, in uh, 1700s Europe, they were using Leyden jars, um, which were basically a way to gather static electricity and discharge it um, into somebody. They used that. Uh, it used to be an all electrical hospital in London that was started in the 1700s that went all the way to the late 1800s. Um, and, uh, they did all, all sorts of stuff like that. So yeah, the electrical model has been around, uh, for a while. Um, but you know, things like devices and acupuncture, it's only one way to access it. I mean, um, electron dense foods will, will help, help you as well. So like, uh, marine foods, ocean foods tend to have the highest density of electrons, um, you know, ketogenic foods tend to have a lot of electrons, carbohydrates don't have as many, um, you know, fresh raw vegetables and things have a lot of electrons and, and structured water in them too, which is great. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the kind of thing. So I decided to focus on that, um, both, you know, for my own personal health, but also the type of supplements that I formulate. That is so fascinating. Uh, and it, it, it speaks to, again, the, the day and age that we're in where anything that is old, right? Uh, old school, old fashioned is seen as archaic. And there's such an emphasis put on cutting edge science and, you know, modern technology and stuff like that. And while those things can be extremely valuable, it doesn't devalue older methods, especially because when coming from, uh, as our viewers know, the perspective of natural law that is timeless, the way things operate in the universe is, is timeless. It, it doesn't change anything, you know, the same aspects, it's an input output system of the universe. If you're, if you're doing, taking certain actions, you know, the, the output is going to be the same regardless of the year you happen to be living in. And the human body is extremely old. And it, it the actual physiology, the way it works, hasn't changed that much, if, if hardly any, for, for thousands of years. So they did have a very profound understanding of the human body, the way it works. They may have not had the most, you know, technological machines that they can hook up and read heartbeat, you know, things like that. 
but they had an understanding uh, from the metaphysical perspective of the human body and looking at it as one thing. That's a big thing that's missing now is it's so sectionalized and compartmentalized, right? All these specialists, they just look at one body part and that's their thing. And they don't, they haven't been trained to look at the body as a whole system, right? An ecology, an ecosystem. Yeah, it's it's so silly. I mean, the allopathic uh, business model, I was going to call it, but I guess it is, but the all, allopathic medical model. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's so short-sighted, man. I mean, it, it, I think most people listening know this. I mean, allopathic medicine um, is really good for emergency care. So if you have a gunshot wound or your legs hanging off or whatever, like they can get you back together um and do it in a, in a pretty clean environment and you'll, you'll probably survive anything outside of that chronic disease optimizing uh, health yeah it it they're just absolutely clueless the system isn't set up for that um i mean they have i think less than an hour's worth of lectures in eight years of medical school on nutrition <laughs> And it just makes no sense. Um, they have zero knowledge of toxicology. It doesn't exist. They don't even take it into account. I mean, there are a vast number of diseases that are caused by toxins. Um, and instead of removing the toxins, what they'll do is they'll try to treat the symptoms caused by the toxins and then they'll label it a disease. I mean, polio right. is a really good example of that. Uh, first of all, polio is still around nowadays. They just changed the name to make it look like the vaccine worked, but now they call it um, Jillian Barr syndrome, um, poliomyelitis. Um, there's a couple other names for it too, but you know, the first wave of polio was caused when they were using a lead arsenic um, pesticide in apple orchards in the US. Um, that was pre-World War I-ish around that time, um, up through the 1920s, if I remember correctly. And then the one in the 40s and 50s was when they introduced DDT, hmm. uh, or, uh, uh, pesticide. And uh, the DDT, you know, accumulated in the nervous system and, and caused these issues um, that uh, are the symptoms of polio and it's still around today. Um, you know, polio was already going down by the time they introduced the vaccine, uh, back then. And, um, cause they, you know, they stopped using DDT. Um, and, uh, you know, now it is caused by other, you know, agents uh, that are out there, but still there as a, it's a toxic based disease. Yeah. And it's funny how they'll just roll stuff out. Uh, because they see it's going to help their bottom line. And then uh, once the actual effects start taking its toll on people and there's all this backlash, then they just kind of like pivot and they're like, okay, well, we won't do that anymore. And there's no actual accountability when it comes to these things that they're they're doing. And they'll just move on to the next thing. They'll roll out the next toxic thing that, that they're and then tell you why this is going to be so great for you. And the cycle continues. Yeah, I mean, that's why we have to be our own health sovereigns, right? Like, yes. health is your responsibility. There is no public health. There's only individual health. And it's Ooh. your responsibility to take. I love that. You know, yeah, you got to you gotta take responsibility and accountability for your own health. If you outsource it uh, to the system, they'll kill you um, <laughs> or they'll mean you. And it, it's, it, I've seen it, you know, time and time and time again. Um with, with people and I, f I feel bad, you know, it's like, you know, your average American now is on uh, four prescription drugs. That's the average. That's crazy. That's, ins that's insane. Yeah. I mean, it's just, what, what, what are you doing? But, you know, doctors are positioned as authorities. Uh, people are trained from birth um, through the educational system to defer and respect and obey authority. And doctors are, you know, they're very, they're still, quite respected in our society and in, in most circles. Right. Um, and people just obey without question. So that's why it's the milligram you know, experiment. Beck, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's that one. There was a, uh, there was a guy named Bob Beck back in the seventies and eighties, um, who, uh, created a, his own electro 
medicine system. Um, and you can still find it today. It's called the Beck protocol, B E C K. If anybody wants to research that, um, but he got into electromedicine, he created his own protocols and very successful still is, um, a lot of people use it. Um, and he invented a couple devices that, um, that were, they're still produced today uh, by a company called Soda, S O T A. Uh, state of the art is what it stands for. So hmm. soda.com if you want to check out the Beck devices, but um, no affiliation with them, by the way, they're just wonderful company, really good people. And they, they stand for what's right. Um, but, uh, you know, Bob was a, he was a uh, aerospace engineer. He was a brilliant man. Um, he did a lot of classified work for the military, uh, here in San Diego and in LA, you know, there's a lot of aerospace. And when he retired, he had all these health problems and he went to doctors and he's so disgusted by what they did to him. He said, you know what, I'm going to figure this out on my own. I'm a smart engineer. And eventually he landed on electromedicine and created his own protocol. But, you know, when Bob was still alive, his whole thing was take your power back. So he used to run these seminars um, where he would empower people with the knowledge to go um, build these electromedicine devices themselves and um, heal themselves. And the FDI, uh, FDA uh, kicked down his door in his house, came in with guns, raided his house, collected all his materials um, and, um, you know, sanctioned him. And Bob fought back. Uh, he just started doing seminars and giving everything away for free. <laughs> and Go Bob. People. Be yeah, like Bob. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he, he was awesome. And, um, but he used to say, take your power back. You know? I love that. Take your power back. Yeah, because he was, his health was extremely poor when he started and then he reversed uh, nearly everything. He succumbed to old age eventually. But, but uh, yeah, take your power back. Yeah. You know, what's amazing is how that, right there what you're saying and you you've never you haven't uh watched the podcast you're not like super familiar with this channel and yet that aligns perfectly with all the fundamental principles that we you know talk about here on the channel is sovereignty right taking your power back you know the, the our yeah. our catchphrase is in, empower inspire encourage so it's all you know like be being your own authority not outsourcing that not externalizing it and being codependent with a, a a psychopathic system that does not have your best interests at heart that's the first thing and i mean it kind of astounds me oftentimes how many of our followers are you know what you could call truthers conspiracy people mm -hmm. um you know pagans any of these uh demographics have had their own version of like oppression and traumatization from the system yep. and yet so many of them are still living such a toxic lifestyle they eat like crap they're smoking whatever it may be and it's like don't, don't you realize like that's exactly what they're forcing down your throat and how can you be awake to the agenda so-called and yet you're just playing right into it and i mean yep. clearly to me that says that they're not they're they're not healing from the internal wounding that is uh compelling self-destructive behaviors you have to cultivate self-love and self-care being awake to the world and the state of things isn't enough on its own you have to actually heal and that doesn't mean just physically but mentally emotionally spiritually as well and that's when that dynamic is going to shift and you can't you can't continue to disrespect yourself and disrespect your body in that way once you've opened up that that self-care for yourself yeah you know i look at it like this it's um you know back in the the 80s and 90s if you're into health they used to label you a health nut yeah. it was, it was, you literally call it a health nut now it's more mainstream so that term isn't really used too much anymore but um people will still look at you a little weird and there are people in the um you know holistic health community that they, just, they go crazy like they're so dogmatic about it they they get orthorexic about what to eat you know so that's like it's like orthorexia is like literally where people are too terrified to eat anything because they're just worried about you know sticking dogmatically to a certain type of diet and everything has to be super healthy i'm not like that at all i'm just saying energy is the currency of life 
And mm. if you can cultivate more energy in your body, then you have more energy for life. Like you can literally create a better life for yourself. And even if you don't want to do that, you can just wake up feeling good every day. I mean, who doesn't want that? Sure. And if you're focusing on your actual detoxing systems, then you can be a little bit less strict about what you're actually consuming because you know That's your right. body is then better equipped to handle whatever, you know, you're you're throwing at it basically. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you an example of that that might resonate with a few people. You know, um, I don't have alcohol that often, uh, but, you know, once in a while, what the heck, you know, why not? But and we know that, you know, alcohol can be a toxin for the body, especially past a certain amount. Um, so why not take a couple steps to neutralize that? There are so many things you can do to detox from alcohol immediately. So you have zero ill effects the next day. I mean, you can do something as simple as taking four activated charcoal capsules, because guess what? If you don't take something to filter the alcohol, then you're the filter. So. <laughs> It, it's harder. It's harder on your body. Um, there is a, uh, a originally Russian design. Now it's manufactured in the Czech Republic, um, uh, specially milled silica gel uh, that you can take uh, called Interas gel. Uh, you can even order it on Amazon and it will, somebody could be literally pretty buzzed and take this and it'll sober them up in 10 to 15 minutes. I mean, it, it works that fast as an antitoxin. It's crazy. Um, so you can just take a tablespoon of that and some water and negate the ill effects there. I mean, those are examples of what I would call like a daily detox. But, um, you know, there's all kinds of things you can do for that, that type of those types of adventures, you know. So uh, next time I want to drink, I just go find an old shoe box and eat some of the silica gel packets out of there just kidding <laughs> i'm kidding do not do that yeah, yeah. do not do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, i mean yeah those those i don't know what type of silica that is but the the soviets figured out a way to mill the silica so it's it's uh not toxic or it's yeah it's surface area it was just crazy high and it it has a really strong charge for certain types of toxins and pull it out yeah Cool. Well, I, I think that's a good segue into kind of the, the next portion where we want to get into like w actionable solutions, right? I, uh, yeah. you know, do you feel we've sufficiently covered kind of like your macro big picture on what yeah. health is and how you can? Okay. So yeah, let's get into um, just like your, your best, like Mary Poppins bag of, of, um, you know, remedies, solutions, protocols, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, that's how I initially found you was you were a part of a, a health summit. So a, a group of other health experts or whatever you want to call that. I'm not sure if you would identify as that, but, you know, researchers and, uh, you know, your, your segment really stood out to me by far. I really connected with it. It, it. it made so much sense to me. And I love that you were sharing like all these very simple things that you can do with like oftentimes just basic household ingredient stuff you might even probably already have in your, in your kitchen or something already. So yeah. um, yeah. Would you like to get into like some of your best, best methods? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I love simple, practical, do it yourself, inexpensive stuff to, you know, detox and add nutrients. I mean, this doesn't have to be hard. And, you know, deep health at a core level, deep energy production, feeling good. It's it's a long term game. So there's a lot of fancy supplements out there. There's a lot of fancy devices and things you can do, but you want to engage with stuff that is inexpensive and like low barrier to entry so you can do it consistently over time because that's where the real results are um, for health and longevity so um, there's two stages right so there's there's detox you know remove the poisons and then add the nutrients back in and mm -hmm. then your your body's own native healing intelligence will kick in because you're supporting that and it's going to fix whatever problems in front of it. I'm, um, just real quick, I'm really glad that you said that kind of as a precursor too, because it's like, 
uh, say you have some, uh, you know, you want, you're trying to clean out your swimming pool, but you've still got a broke, like a sewage pipe that's dumping sewage into it. Like you could just yes. sit there and scoop it out and try to clean it out all day. But until you stop the, you know, the, the toxins and actually clean that out, then you yes. can, then you can kind of go from there and you have something, you know, a clean slate to work from. Yeah, that's why my philosophy is removed and add. That is a great analogy. Another one I use is like, let's say that someone is in a lot of credit card debt and they're like, oh, I need to get out of credit card debt. <laughs> well, you know, obviously the first thing you're going to do is, is stop using them, right? So that's great. But then you still have all this debt over here that is accruing interest at like a high rate. And so you need to remove that debt to actually get out of it so that that's like the toxin load that's already in your body it's okay if you stopped inputting toxins but you gotta get to remove the ones that are already there so that's kind of another model i use to explain it so yeah that's great um yeah well why don't we start with like daily detox stuff because those are like super easy to do so you know one of them i already talked about was vitamin c vitamin c is like a swiss army knife of nutrients it's not a micronutrient it's a macronutrient you need it in large amounts pretty much daily um nearly every cell in the body uses it but primarily it is an antitoxin so if you're exposed to stuff on a daily basis like atmospheric pollutants from you know some of the uh, the geoengineering which they've they've definitely stepped up a lot lately um you know um car exhaust i mean there's a toxin in car tires called six um uh, ppde which uh, kills large vertebrate fish next to busy roads in the pacific northwest hardly anybody knows about that you're breathing that next to a road and i'm a truck um, driver so <laughs> yeah yeah so as a Gosh. daily strategy uh you should be taking probably at least 4,000 milligrams, which is a, a teaspoon of vitamin C per day. And what that's going to do is electron donor. It's an antitoxin. Um, your immune system actually runs on electricity. Um, it uses little bolts of electricity to neutralize pathogens. Um, this has actually been filmed by two Swiss researchers, um, like literally zaps pathogens to break them open and kill them. Um, so that is why vitamin C works when people are sick is because it donates electrons, which their immune system uses as fuel. So, um, it also mitigates stress. So people who, um, are under a lot of stress, like they produce cortisol. So this actually helps remove cortisol and neutralize it from your system. So you experience less of the harmful effects of cortisol and cortisol causes inflammation It can cause depression past a certain amount because your brain gets inflamed um can act, cause actual brain damage um if it's chronic enough um causes weight gain hormone disruption all this stuff so uh vitamin c is cheap you can buy it in bulk in powder form just make sure you get glyphosate free vitamin c so 90 percent of vitamin c is made from fermented corn. corn um yeah and so corn's a very it's probably the most gmo product versus uh apart from soybeans um, so most of it's sprayed with Roundup, like glyphosate. So you have to get a glyphosate-free one, which they're out there. Can you um, name like a couple of your favorite brands? Yeah, there's, um, it changes a lot. So um, there is a brand made in Scotland. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Um, that's a good one. I have a U.S. supplier of vitamin C for a product that I make that is glyphosate free, but they're like wholesale. They don't go direct to the public. Um, so I don't know the other trade names that might be sold under. A lot of times people with vitamin C, the, the common pushback I'll get is like, well, you know, I can get I need vitamin C with like where it comes with rose hips or, or this or that, like the cofactors. That's a fair point. There are some cofactors that do boost absorption. Here's the thing. If you're buying those, um, they put such a tiny amount of the cofactor in there just so they can advertise it. Mm. Um, you're barely getting any of that to be effective, and it's mostly still ascorbic acid. So Albert St. Georgie, who won a Nobel Prize for discovering vitamin C, um, you know, proved that ascorbic acid is vitamin C. It's 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 that molecule. So you just want straight ascorbic acid, not ascorbate, which is 
vitamin C mixed with calcium usually, but you want ascorbic acid as the most electrons. Um, so look around, you'll, you'll find stuff online that's glyphosate free, buy it in bulk form in the powder and just stir it up and, uh, drink it at night. That's when I have it before I go to bed. Yeah. Um, a question about that too. Um, yeah. another thing you hear a lot about vitamin C is that there's a max absorption or like basically once you hit a threshold, like you're just mm -hmm. going to eliminate it. So is, you know, what is that, uh, that max amount? Is it possible to take too much that it's going to put too much strain on like your kidneys or anything like that? That's a great question. I actually have a product that is focused on getting people to that exact number. Um, what you're describing is something that was created in the 1960s by a doctor named, uh, Dr. Cathcart. And he was one of the original orthomolecular doctors. He was one of the founders of orthomolecular medicine, which is basically high dose uh, vitamin therapy. And um, Dr. Cathcart discovered that uh, there is something called a bowel tolerance number, and it is different for everyone. So you can't overdose on vitamin C because it's water soluble. So if your body has all the vitamin C that it can absorb, then it literally just comes out the other end in the form of a watery discharge, right? So um, just like diarrhea, but there won't be anything in there. It's just water. Um, and that's called your bowel tolerance number. So that's actually, if you want to do, so vitamin C flush, these have been done for a long time. Um, I have a whole product built around it, uh, like a program, but um, I discovered them um, on my own because I wanted to do uh, like quick detoxes. And I also wanted to like recharge my body if I was feeling tired. Mm. And I found out about this ball tolerance number. And what's interesting is that everyone's number is different. So if you take somebody that's on, in like really good health, um, not carrying a high toxic load, and um, they're not stressed, they their bowel tolerance could be around 15,000 milligrams of vitamin C. It's still and really just, high <laughs> compared yeah. to you're talking about 4,000 a day, right? Yeah, yeah, I do four to 8,000 a day. Um, and so that, you know, could be 15, 20,000 milligrams, something like that, where they'll hit their bowel tolerance. But someone who's unhealthy, sick, high toxic load, they can go over 100,000 milligrams. Easy. Um, Crazy. You know, I had a customer do 104,000 milligrams until he flushed because his toxic load was so extremely high. Um, there's um, uh, your average person is probably around 22,000 to 35,000 milligrams before they flush. Um, and is that, would that actually be like an effective metric to see if that number is going down, your tolerance is going down, that you're yeah, actually so having you an effect? Yeah, it's interesting. So what, there's a certain way to titrate it, but the, in a nutshell, what you do is, is you take um, two to 3,000 milligrams every 15 minutes until you flush. So then you hit your bowel tolerance number, right? Let's say just for sake of round numbers, it's 10,000 milligrams. Um, then what you do is you taper down off that number. So you do 70% of that the next day and so on until you hit a maintenance dose. So, it, you know, the next day, you know, it'd be uh, like 7,000 7, some milligrams. Um, and then until you get down to your maintenance dose, which could be like 4,000. So um, you, you saturate your, your blood plasma all the way to the top of vitamin C It's water soluble. Anything that your body doesn't take and use comes out the other end. And then you slowly bring it back down again through the taper period. Okay. Vitamin C flush is one of the cheapest. It is the cheapest and fastest detox you can do. Cause for most people, it takes like two hours and you feel great. Awesome. So what's next? Uh, so that one, but yeah, take vitamin C daily too. So that's, that's a good daily detox. Um, another favorite daily detox of mine is EDTA. EDTA is an amino acid made from vinegar. Um, used to be a drug that was invented in, I think 1936 in Germany. Um, and it had drug status in the U S until late seventies, I believe. Um, and then it, you know, became just a generic supplement. Um, but EDTA is really, 
really good at safely removing heavy metals. Specifically, it's really good at lead, mercury, and cadmium. Um, we all have a high level of heavy metals in our bodies. 87% um, of the lead from the leaded fuel era in the US is still out there. Lead's an element, it doesn't break down, mm. it just stays and it's persistent. And so we're, we're breathing it. It's in a lot of products, especially women um, who use makeup. Uh, most makeup has a very high lead content. It makes, makes it spread easier. I was gonna say, cause I, I noticed yeah. actually they use EDTA in the, the makeup products as well. Yeah, it's a preservative as well, cause it's an electron donor. So it's well, a really stable preservative. So you'll see EDTA in food. You'll see yeah. it in some makeup, stuff like that. Um, but you can buy EDTA in bulk, you know, so for like 12 bucks, you can get like probably a year's supply at least, maybe two years. Um, and uh, I take it every morning to help bind to excess metals in my body. And if anyone wants to do more research on this, because um, typ typically I'll hear pushback on EDTA, usually from somebody in the medical industrial industry who drives a paycheck from there because they say, oh, it's dangerous. It's, it's this and that going to move no. metals around but not yeah, eliminate yeah. them that's something that i came across in my research about that Yeah, so chlorella and spirulina will do that um so will cilantro so they're like, while we're on this topic there are heavy metal mobilizers and there are heavy metal Chelators. binders yeah so if you're doing like i see these smoothie recipes online where they're like heavy metal detox and it's just all cilantro and there's no binder it's just crazy um, you, you need to do that with like zeolite, charcoal, and a couple other binders to get specific types of metals. Um, EDTA is a chelator. So think of it as like a molecular cage, um, where it goes through your body and it grabs the metal and it puts it in a cage and it makes it safe for excretion. That's why it's so great. I mean, you can go, if you want, you can go do an IV of it and they'll mainline you know grams of this stuff into your body and and uh pull it out dr gary gordon the guy who wrote a book on it called detox with oral chelation he also headed up a 30 million dollar um, study on edta that was done over a decade um he's the expert on it um he actually prefers oral um and the reason why is because heavy metals are so dangerous uh, that they're usually not in your bloodstream. They are shunted into your fat as soon as your body can get them in there to seal them off from the rest of your body. Mm. And then after that, they go into your bones. Um, and so people, that's why older people, when they start losing bone mass, they start having all these crazy health problems. Osteoporosis and things it like starts that. starts releasing all the metals, yeah. So they get... Wow. You, yeah, you get all these older guys with these neurodegenerative disorders. Um, Alzheimer's. Yeah cancers and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and MS, it's because their bone density went down. It's releasing all these metals. So according to Dr. Gary Gordon, you got to be doing oral EDTA for like 15 years until you the bones have remodeled enough to release all the metal and for the EDTA to capture it. Wow. Yeah. So, so buy I'm in bulk. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I've been taking it three years now and I, it just goes in my morning tea. It gets flavorless. And what is the dosage for that? Would you recommend? Well, you know, it depends on someone's body weight. So again, anyone that's interested in this, don't just go and do it. Like get that book detox with oral chelation by Dr. Gary Gordon, um, great. and read it. Um, it, once you do that, then, you know, figure out your own dosage. But I take personally, I take a quarter teaspoon. Uh, most people recommend one fifth of a teaspoon, uh, which is obviously less than that. Yeah. Um, and if somebody has a really high toxic metal burden, um, they're going to want to take a heck of a lot less than that and not do it daily. Um, you know, my mom, she's 77 now and I help her with her health all the time. And, um, you know, she's been, you know, traumatized like a lot of people by, you know, dentists over the decades mm -hmm. who, you know, dentists are just, man, they're, <laughs> it's like medieval surgeons. <laughs> Uh, but so her mouth's full of metal, right? And, and those amalgams and all the things. And it's like her body's accumulated so much mercury from that. Um, when I put her on one fifth of a teaspoon, I mean, it, it, it was, it was bad. It, it, it pulled out so much metal at once that it really 
uh, affected her energy levels, her mood, uh, all these things. So I had to add uh, charcoal and silica and zeolite um, to bind um, some of it. So, um, you know, if, if people are really interested in heavy metals uh, detox and they want to do it at home, um, read the Dr. Gary Gordon book, but also Dr. Klinghart is quite known for his protocol, um, which I would say is pretty safe as well. Uh, so that's Dr. Klinghart. You can look him up for the heavy metals protocol. He's, he's great. Awesome. And then um, let's talk, I'll throw in a third daily detox that I personally do. And this one's going to sound crazy. Uh, I get it. Um, I even wrote a little ebook on this that's heavily referenced because people would just, just think it's nuts. But um, <laughs> I take borax every day. So cool. let's let's take let's talk about what borax is. The X scares people, and they think they think it's wild. But um, borax is an ionic form of boron, um, and the other two ingredients are sodium and oxygen. That's what borax is. Uh, borax is an extremely uh, good electron donor, and it's an extremely bioavailable form of boron. Boron was very common in our food supply up to World War II, after World War II, because they switched to MPK fertilizer, yep. uh, bound to boron in the soil and it stripped it. And so pre-World War II, you could eat an apple, it'd have like 14 milligrams of boron. And now it's like 0.5 or less, because uh, it's just not in the soil. So we used to get a lot of boron every day and we don't anymore. And boron is amazing for so many things because it works at such a base level in the body, but it's really good at detoxing fluoride. And we've all had too much fluoride exposure. Uh, fluoride causes bone cancers. It reduces intelligence. Um, it causes weight gain. It calcifies your pineal gland, which makes people more docile and less spiritual. Uh, it does a lot of bad things. So you always want to be detoxing fluoride and borax. I mean, for five bucks, you can get a box of 20 meal team. That'll last you probably a decade, you know, because these dosages you take it at are really low. Um, and for men and women, it harmonizes their hormones. So for men, most guys are low testosterone these days. It'll, it'll balance that out and bring it up a little bit. It combats excess estrogen for women. Uh, it smooths oh. out their, their hormones as well. Um, it also regulates your calcium metabolism. So there's been an explosion in heart disease, particularly with men. That's because of a dysregulated calcium metabolism. So when I saw all this advice during the, um, the scamdemic um, to take these huge doses of vitamin D, I was just like, this is crazy because if you take vitamin D without A and K, it liberates calcium, but the calcium doesn't know where to go. So it settles in your soft tissues, particularly your arteries, and that's what causes this heart disease. Hmm. And so a boron is really good at um, telling calcium where to go and regulating that calcium metabolism. So calcium just goes in your teeth and your bones and other places where it goes, but it doesn't settle in your soft tissues. And that's why I, that's one of the reasons I take it long term. Um, is because uh, it regulates your calcium metabolism. It's huge. Love it. So, and by the way, the, it was common to take, uh, there's even the Merck medical manual from like 1890 has uh, borax in there. And there's, a, there's another, uh, you can find copies of it on eBay for like 300 bucks, but uh, there's, there's like a home library of natural health from like 1910 um and it has borax in there and so people used to make borax teas and ingest it they use it as an eye eye wash actually even today you can find like a boric acid eye wash in drug stores that's it's actually uh borax um they just make it expensive and sell it back to you um you can use it as a hair wash it's really good for dandruff i mean it's it's uh it's got all kinds of benefits amazing yeah, so those are those are I mean those are ones that I do every day. They're low barrier to entry. They're super cheap, and uh, they are daily detox drivers. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just want to take a quick moment to offer you a special gift. 
It's the free initiation package download. This is a free download package that includes the toolbox mini course. I created this package to equip you with all of the essential tools you need for any type of energetic or magical practice for anyone serious about their spiritual development. It's comprised of three parts, the circle, the breath, and the voice, where you'll learn how to cast the circle of the magi various breathwork techniques, including a powerful guided breathwork meditation, rune galler, and more. You'll also get access to the Inner Sanctum, our private Facebook group and Discord server, as well as some Wizard Factory wallpapers for desktop and mobile, all for free. And for those who've already seen this course, I'm happy to announce that this is a brand new remake with better production and even more information. You can find the link to get yours in the description below. So check it out, and let's get back to the content. Perfect. So that covers the kind of daily daily regimen, and as I'm sure even any one of those is probably pretty potent on their own, but if you're doing all three, you probably, you know, it's a, a powerhouse trifecta right there. It's a cumulative effect over time. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just... I just, I literally throw these in my morning tea. I don't, the vitamin C I do at night, but the, the borax and the, the EDTA, I just throw it in my morning tea and call it a day. Um, and then, you know, periodically I do like bigger detoxes. If you want to do those like, like liver or, you know, infrared sauna, niacin or dry fasting is another one that mm. that's good. That one's actually free. It's not fun, but it, it's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think would be great to get into the uh, liver and gallbladder cleanse uh, because uh, it's relevant to. I recently just tried your your protocol. Well, you know, your mm -hmm. protocol. I know you're just a synthesizer, and you're you know, right. Uh, as is how it goes in the health game, right? I mean, these yeah. these are ancient practices, really. And um, yeah. but uh, I did my first about three weeks ago. I'm actually coming up next weekend. I'll be starting my second yeah. one. So nice. it'll been the four, you know, four weeks. You, you typically you want to do them about a month apart. Yep. And uh, dude, it, insane. I've never yeah. experienced anything like that before. <laughs> and it's, tell me, tell me about. It. So did you get some gallstones coming out or what? Quite a few, probably two handfuls worth. Whew, man, I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. from what I was reading in your in your ebooks, that uh, typically. The first one, some people don't even have anything or much, much of anything come out the first one, but then by the third or fourth is when like the mother load, you know, so I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to seeing what that is going to be like if even my first one was uh, quite the purge. Yeah, you're going to have the physical size of your liver is going to go down. Wow. Um, and uh, yeah, your torso will actually get a little flatter. It's most people are walking around with a like a distended liver and gallbladder because they're just stuffed full of gallstones and right the, it's just nuts yeah so you go to a doctor they'll tell you to cut it out yeah well, that's their answer for everything <laughs> right yeah so what what's interesting about this and i'd love to get your thoughts on it is you know again i, I kind of really i've been health conscious for for a while but uh yeah. I, I went through some really difficult time uh, a few years and my health kind of went downhill. And so about this time last year, I really decided, you know, I'm going to not only heal emotionally from the aftermath of that, but I want to really focus on my physical health and get that back up, up to speed. So, uh, your, your work really was a big uh, factor in that and giving me stuff just like this. That's like, very practical, very low barrier, barrier to entry, like you said. I started taking vitamin C daily, you know, uh, Lugol's iodine. Yeah, um, I love Lugol's. Uh, taking different supplements and things like that. And, and I also, in that process, came across the concept of fasting, which, of course, you know, I've heard about. It's been kind of faddish for several years and it's it's gaining momentum but i'd never really understood I, I mean i thought oh well intermittent fasting is something like athletes do to cut 
and in this and that, but I was not aware of all of the uh, healing benefits, specifically autophagy. You know, I've heard of it for like keto, basically is what I'm saying, uh, but I'd never heard even heard of autophagy. And when I started learning about that, I was yeah. very interested in it because I've had cr chronic fatigue and low energy and uh, brain fog and, and certain different symptoms for quite some time. And um, I've, I'd always wondered, like, is there something wrong with me? You know, do I have some kind of disease that I don't know about? Um, I too. Right. And so I did start experimenting with fasting. I did some like, you know, two and then three. And then the longest one I did was four days. I haven't gone past mm -hmm. that threshold, though. I felt like I could have kept going. But um, one thing I experienced was really diminished energy. It, to the point, it seemed like, uh, you know, I didn't feel like my health was in danger, but that something mm -hmm. was still not quite aligned for me to be getting the most benefit out of the fast itself. And basically, as I started researching more, and then I came across an email from your newsletter talking about gallstones and liver toxicity, mm -hmm. I started thinking, I wonder if that is what's compounding that effect and making it really hard for me to do the fast because my cortisol was super high. I was, mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to sleep. That was one of the bigger yeah. sticking points. And just like, so my body was in this like panic state, almost like we're dying. We got to get food and you, you know, yeah. like h extremely high anxiety. So all that to say, I came across the, what you were talking about with the little liver and gallbladder stuff. And I do personally intuitively feel like that might be the thing that is like the big kind of uh, bottleneck that can kind of unlock new levels once I uh, handle that. But uh, I'd love to get your thoughts on what I'm sharing about that. Yeah, you do need to have your detox pathways uh, cleared out before doing a hardcore fast. Did you do a dry fast or a water fast? Water mostly. Um, okay. little bits of yep. tea and coffee black, but got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done intermittent, I've done one meal a day since 2008. Um, there is a book that came out called the warrior diet back in the early two thousands written by a guy named Ori Hoffmuckler. And he was the first guy to talk about autophagy, uh, in relation to fasting. And I just, I glommed onto that and I've been doing it ever since. Um, and so I love that you brought up autophagy cause that's key. Um, you know, water fasting is a lot harder on the body than dry fasting. I know that sounds insane. <laughs> um, but the thing with water fasting is that you're still engaging your digestion system. Interesting. And so your body goes through a process where it breaks down protein, uh, breaks down your muscle, um, it's called gluconeogenesis and so it converts basically protein into glucose for energy because your digestion system is engaged and your heart is a muscle and so um you know these guys that do these month-long water fasts you're causing you know heart damage because it will cannibalize you know heart tissue to 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 bit for energy basically oh wow um there's a very complex biochemical pathway that happens when you do a dry fast because your digestion 100 is not engaged at all your body goes in this radical form of autophagy where it just shreds fat it shreds scar tissue it shreds misfolded proteins and it shreds and repairs uh, damaged dna um and i can tell you from experience doing both water fast and dry fast i didn't lose any muscle at all on the dry fast which sounds insane i did it for five days no food no water um, and I could feel old injuries healing on my body. I had a couple head injuries. I could feel those, a uh, couple broken ribs. I could feel it working on those old ankle injury. I could feel that, uh, where I had wrist surgery twice, like that whole site just flared red. Um, and, uh, for anyone interested in, in dry fast and the benefit, it's not something to toy around with. You don't just decide you're going to do it and do it. Um, you have to go into it the right way and you got to come out the right way. And there's very specific time periods you can do it for. So the expert on that is a guy named August Dunning. Uh, 
this is called the Russian method of dry fasting. It's been used in Russia for over 50 years. They have hundreds of clinical studies on it. They have actual clinics where you can go do them medical, medically supervised. But the only, really the only information in English on it is from a guy named August Dunny. He wrote a book called The Phoenix Protocol. It's really easy to read. Mm-hmm. And he has a YouTube channel. And you can actually start at the beginning of this guy's YouTube channel and go to the end. And when you start at the beginning, you're just like, man, I, I don't know about this dry fasting. This guy looks like a wreck. And then you go forward in time over two years and he does dry fast on there. He does like seven day dry fast all the time. And he does a video every day. You actually see him de-age and I'm not making this up. You literally see this guy de-age in front of you. I mean, he's in his sixties. I think he's almost 70 now. Wow. Um, and it's, it's, when I saw those videos, because I was just trapped on this flight for like six hours one time, uh, I downloaded his whole channel. I just watched him in sequence, and I was like, this is insane. Like, this guy's literally de-aging in front of me. I got to do this. And um, hmm. the the dry fast, it will it 100% will detox you on a cellular level. The issue is, is like you say, if your liver is kind of jammed up, um, you're gonna you're gonna have some problems so you definitely want to start clearing that out first yeah well that's good to know though because then now now i'm focusing on liver and this is going to be like a year-long commitment doing these yeah. once a month and, the, and there's a yep. few um kidney cleanses mixed in there as well yeah, why don't you do one or two yeah yep and then that would probably be the time to revisit i mean i i could I've been doing or keeping with like short, like 36 hour fast, the stuff like that. That's, yeah. you know, really easy for me. Uh, no problem. Yeah. It's usually in into the later part of the second day when I start really feeling that like, uh, like it's hard to think. I feel yep. kind of really, really lethargic, like going upstairs. I'm just like, <sighs> you know, yeah. I um, hear so, uh, but it's, you know, when I do pick that up as far as longer fast now, I'll probably be looking into doing the dry fast thing because it sounds ca- counterintuitive right like you think oh well yeah, i thought it was insane when i came across it but you don't have to like the standard dry fast like a real dry fast is seven days um if if you do a medically supervised one at the clinic in siberia dr filanov's clinic um it's 11 days well like, I, no food no water 11 days like it's no joke but people go in with some pretty serious disease cases and they come out cured. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty wild. Um, and there's, there's a lot of stories around that. You can find some of Dr. Filanov's work in, uh, translated into English here and there, if you look online. Um, but you can do a one day dry fast, two day, three day, and that's, that's no problem. You go past three days, um, you get, a massive stem cell release. And if you interrupt that by eating or drinking, um, it actually can harm your stem cell production moving forward in time. So um, if you go past three days, then you're, you just committed to five. (laughs) If you go past five days, you just committed to seven because the stem cells come out of their niches and, and programmed waves and you can't interrupt those waves. It's really important. So you know what just do one one day you know 48 hours whatever three days no big deal you go past that uh you, you're stuck you're now committed to five so um then okay. that is the major benefit of dry fasting uh over wet fasting uh besides not losing muscle tissue is that um you get a free endogenous stem cell treatment it is the world's best stem cell treatment you got guys going to clinics in mexico paying 35 grand for these stem cell treatments where most of the stem cells just die at the injection site anyway and they don't <laughs> uh, you know they don't distribute through the body wow um this is a free stem cell treatment and it's, it's repetitive it's sustainable yeah yeah it's and i'm going to tell you some people find the dry fast really easy i had a friend do it he did seven days just breeze through it no big deal he's like working you know um his parents did it his parents are in their 70s they had zero problems they even had more energy i'll be honest with you when i did my first five day i felt like shit um (laughs) 
I'll just be real with you. I had no energy. I had a headache. I felt bad. Um, and uh, it didn't really let up. <laughs> so, and then, um, and then I detox like crazy, man. I mean, you'd be shocked at what comes out. You still pee because as you're, you're the, this radical form of ketosis shreds the fat in your body, like one gram of fat reduce, uh, releases 110 grams of water. So you get this endogenous water production and that, um, and osmotic pressure pushes toxins out of your cells um and so when you pee it's it's like crazy because it, it's just it's like i mean it sounds gross but it's like really dense and it just like sinks to the bottom of the toilet right away wow because this is full of stuff so um yeah every once in a while i'll reset my digestive system because all the cells in your digestive system will replace themselves within um 24 hours and when i say all the cells i mean the very topmost layer um, so if you want to give your gut a little break and, and, um, you know, give it a little reset, I just do a 24 hour one. That's easy. Great. So, yeah, I mean, those are, th those are kind of be my main detox one. I mean, the liver just to finish up on that, it is the, I mean, man, for an impactful detox, there, I mean, I honestly think there is no, uh, lower effort, high, higher payoff than a liver detox. Uh, it's just, once you get your liver working right, um, everything works better, man. Your skin looks better. You sleep better. Your digestion is better. Your mood's better. It's just your body, you just reduce the overall toxic burden for your body. And like you are physically removing objects that don't belong in your gallbladder and liver. Like, yeah. And when you see these things, you'll be like, oh my God, I'm glad that's not inside me anymore. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I mean, and some people experience burning when it comes out. I didn't my last one, which I just did last weekend. But prior to that, I did. Those are toxins. Like that burning, those are toxins burning you on the way out. Like, yeah. That's a thing, you know, and you'll have this foam kind of chaff over everything. Those are like little crystals, also toxins. Right. Um, so had a lot of that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was crazy, man. That, yeah, it's nuts, man. I mean, I'll be real with people listening. I know it's gross, but I, I, I went to a Goodwill and I got a, a colander and my first couple ones, I caught all the gallstones because I wanted to look at them. The, the, the green ones are mainly old cholesterol and that's why they float because there's like fat in there. But the tan ones, they're dense and they're full of more toxins and different toxins and those sink. Yeah. I wanted to see those too. Yeah. So yeah. Well, it's like pretty it, wild. if you think it's gross, I get, then it's what's really gross is that it's inside you instead of being expelled and, and, you know, cleaning out your system. So like, yeah, that's one yeah, way to look I mean, at it. Let that be a motivation to you that if you're not looking into this stuff, I guarantee you've got that going on inside you. And uh, why wouldn't you want to get it out? Right. Children have them now. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah kids have them it's just it's so sad man i mean it's like yeah it's a toxic environment and i'm not saying this from doom and gloom i'm place i'm saying this from an awesome place like hey yeah there's eighty six thousand new chemicals that have entered our environment since world war ii like let's do something about it right it doesn't have to be hard right know? that's the beauty of it is i mean you you have to be real first and look at things for what they are because that's you know the only way you can make uh, accurate, you know, solutions to that. And then from there, n know that there are solutions and that, yeah, you can see that the situation is bad, but at least then you, you know what's happening and you're actually empowered to uh, do something about it. At least, you know, start with yourself, start with your family, yes. your kids, and then yep. be that example. Like they'll, you know, the, pe the people around you, your friends and family, yep. they'll see the transformation and that, that will sell it much better than you, you know, kind of like trying to shove it down their throats, basically. Yeah. I mean, change yourself and the world around you will change. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I've had friends ask me what I'm doing, you know, pretty frequently, you know, some of them will take action. Some of them don't, you know, I had a, I had a friend who was obese and, you know, one day he came to me and he just asked me, he's like, what, what do I do? You know? And like, 
literally we just put them on essentially like a version of the paleo diet and he stuck to it for a year and he lost all this weight wow. um, you know and he's stuck with it for like four or five years now you know he just he's one of those people that just saw that at work stuck with it and and he's good and then now he's got all this loose skin so we've been looking forever for how to fix that and there's only two ways the first way is expensive and it works but not great so that's you got to take huge amounts of enzymes on an empty stomach mm -hmm. um, and it'll start to digest down and break down that excess skin um, as well as scar tissue and stuff this was used in russia for uh, a long time for in soviet russia for their olympic athletes it helps recovery uh, taking enzymes on an empty stomach but the other way is a dry fast so Ooh. a dry fast will go in there it'll just shred that excess skin and, and break it down and use it for energy um so and that's, that's not only free but it saves you money <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah it's just hard you know i mean it's a, it's a, it's a mental commitment, man. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you don't realize how much, how entertaining it is to eat and drink stuff until you don't do it at all. And you're just like, wow. <laughs> what do <laughs> I do? Feels empty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, not yeah. just the eating, but the preparing, you know, grocery shopping, all that kind of stuff too. All of it. It's yeah. crazy how like a five day fast, I mean, that's almost a week. You, and then at the end of that, you realize like how much time you would have spent cooking and preparing food, how much, you know, yeah. what your grocery will, bill would have been, you know, and yeah. then the next time you go, you don't, you don't have to buy but a few things because you didn't run out of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, you can, a low barrier to entry for that one is to start with a 24 hour, you know? Yeah. And, or, or even just watch a couple of videos on YouTube from August Dunning. Yeah. I also, I'm not yeah. sure if you've heard of this person, but I really like Dr. Mindy Pels. Um, she's on, yeah. on YouTube. Uh, yeah. She's really, really awesome. Runs lots of these like group workshop kind of things where people nice. are doing, doing it together. So it's kind of like a support group, but she's got lots of great free, you know, information. Like Theo said, don't, don't just dive into that. Do your research first, figure out, you know, how to plan it what you might need, how to break the fast. That's really important as well. That's so, super key. Yeah. Well, uh, looks like we're starting to, to run out of time here. I don't want to uh, keep you from your, your other appointments and such, but uh, what an amazing conversation. And man, you know, for those of you watching, do give Theo a follow, sign up for his newsletter, try to find other content that he's made because this man is a wealth of knowledge. I mean, we barely scratched the surface on this conversation here today. So I hope uh, that, you know, people got value out of this and got something, you know, practical and usable that they can get into. But again, uh, find Theo and find his content. Why don't you uh, tell people where they can find you and, uh, and work with you potentially? You know, the easiest way to find me, um, you can go to my site. Uh, it's a really simple, just kind of one page thing so people can find me. It's called ForgottenHealth.com, ForgottenHealth.com. And um, you can opt into my newsletter there. And um, to as a gift for opting in, I wrote a program on um, 5G. It's still my most popular one even today. Um, so it talks about what 5G is, how it works on your body to harm your health and what actually to do about it. So I have a protocol in the back um, that's pretty easy to follow to kind of help people defend themselves against it. Um, and so you can just grab that for free if you go to ForgottenHealth.com. And then um, there's a couple other sites I have too that are specific to the product. But um, for people that were interested in the vitamin C flush, like I have a program for that, that's called purevitamincflush.com. Um, and then I have a humic and fulvic supplement that I love because it detoxes and recharges your cells. Uh, and that is called getbiorecharge.com. So any of those, um, you'll find me and end up on my newsletter. And for everyone that emails me um, at Theo at ForgottenHealth.com, I always write back personally. Yeah. Um, so yeah, easy, easy as. Uh, too bad we didn't have a couple more minutes to hit the nutrient side because we talked about detox. But yeah, I'm thinking um, if you're up for it, I'd love to do a follow up to this. Yeah, 
why don't we do that? Because then we can focus on, um, we can really give it the attention it deserves. Um, and um, then we can maybe talk about like emotional detox as well. Yeah. Um, and some and, of the esoteric stuff like you were talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Because then we can kind of cover that, that part too. Because um, there's some, man, there's some really interesting stuff going on and, and has been going on for a long time um, with uh, like scalar waves and, and kind of how that information affects you and, and all that stuff. So uh, I'd love to love to get into that. Um, but I, you know what, at least today, like we covered some stuff that people can take and use right now for, for next to nothing, you know, like the, like the borax and the, the dry fasting and all that. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we'll, we can, we can go there and then we can do a follow up one whenever you're ready. I'd love to great stuff, Theo. Thank you cool. so much for sharing your, your knowledge with us today. I hope everyone, you know, enjoyed this and uh, got some real like useful and practical information. Uh, go definitely, you know, check out his work, give him a follow in his newsletter, check out his, uh, the liver and gallbladder cleanse. I can personally attest that that is quite something and, um, you know, could, could be the thing that can transform your health. I am also, um, a user of his, uh, fulvic and humic product which is also amazing it's it's hard to get by that's why i kind of try to stock up once when he does have it uh, i kind of hoard it for myself but um definitely just about the best if not the best you can you can find out there because most everything else is contaminated and that's why it's so hard to get a hold of this stuff uh because he's so stringent on his standards and make sure he doesn't co compromise quality so you know, that's, uh, that speaks volumes of you as well. So Appreciate thank you. It. Thank you for all the work that you're doing for health and, and just helping empower people to, uh, you know, take, take their own, uh, health sovereignty back. So. I appreciate it. Thank you. Likewise. I mean, thanks for helping get the message out there and, and using some of these, these products, you know, like the, yeah, the liver flush, man. I mean, that, that's a big one. Um, so yeah. That's a, I send that one out to my newsletter list periodically. Um, so, yep. uh, yeah, we'll get that one. I'm actually mentioning that, um, soon here. So yeah, but anyways, we'll, we'll Perfect. talk about, we'll talk about more of that in the future. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. And, um, so again, if you did get value out of this, do please drop a like below, help more people see it, help more people, you know, heal themselves and their families as well. That's the best way you can support the content. Also subscribe down below, hit that bell to bypass the uh, suppression algorithms that, you know, YouTube is, is trying to uh, limit the reach on this type of content. And uh, so, you know, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, be empowered, inspired, and encouraged.